Hello and welcome to this training video where we focus on the consumer duty. Uh, Model Office, um, if you've looked at all the other training videos, um, covers all the rules and regulations, but obviously this one is looking just at the consumer duty. Um, the consumer duty sits in the uh, your engagement regulatory key. So um, what we're basically doing at Model Office is, is automating a lot of the diagnostic and the gap analysis and the audit reporting processes uh, within your business and also looking at data that's held within any uh, systems that you're using, such as back office practice management solutions, which I'll also show you. Um, so here you've got the your engagement key regulatory key where the consumer duty sits. So at this stage, we're asking uh, you to self-assess, self-audit, benchmark where you believe you are against the consumer duty in this case. Um, so you're asking a number of questions. There's about 25 or so questions around the consumer duty. And each of these keys has between nine and 11 business functions, we call them. And one of these business functions is the consumer duty. So you will then go through this by um, by looking at the question, looking at any pop-up resources that may apply, reading that, going back, and then answering the question and moving forward to um, to the best of your ability and taking a look at that um, as, as you go forward. And as you can see, there's, there's a fair few questions here um, uh, regarding the consumer duty where you're being asked to take a look at, is it above the required level, below the required level, unsure, plan to have it or don't have it. At the end of the day, you should ideally know what the required level is. Uh, and, and if you don't know, then default to the bottom three, but we will do also have yes, no's and not applicables depending on the regulatory permissions of your business. Um, we also have these pop-up resources I've, I've talked about and they will go into various resources. For the more technical questions, it may go into the actual rule book themselves. And so you can get the latest on the regulatory handbook uh, to help you. So once you've done that, and once you've completed the uh, assessment, then you're going to get a regulatory dashboard uh, like so, which covers all the key areas um, that we are assessing across all the rules and regulations, not just the consumer duty. Um, but um, it's important to mention also, we have a chat bot on the enterprise version, and you can pretty much put in anything around the consumer duty that you want, or any of the rules and regulations, or even how to use the system and get support on, on model office itself. Um, and uh, what you can then do is input that information in um, and then it will give you some ideas of, uh, of what you might want to be looking at. So here it's giving you a, a look at a template that we've devised uh, across risk analysis and risk strategy and planning within, within your business across the four outcomes, for example, uh, for the consumer duty, it's also looking at um, key areas surrounding culture governance, data that you might want to bring through and the risk associated of that, accountability, also what other rules and regulations you may want to uh, take a look at and how they um, blend across to the consumer duty and finally the data that you need as a business. Um, this type of resource is also available um, within the system, um, which I'll show you in a minute across the consumer duty in the, in the actual um, business function itself, which is here. So you can see in the your engagement key, um, this firm has, hasn't scored particularly brilliantly around the consumer duty. So we uh, click on that and it takes you into the dashboard. Now, each of these, what we call dynamic steers are highly dynamic and are produced in real time and are all designed for you to improve these scores, improve your knowledge uh, and improve uh, the business as you go forward across what you need to do to ensure that you comply. So here again, you're getting lots of resources. You're getting uh, links into the FCA. Um, website, you're getting um, links into the document that I just showed you actually, um, which was on the chat bot, but it's also in, in here as well that you can you can download um, from the system. So that's exactly the same document I've just shown you. Um, so there's lots of information in here that you um, that you you might want to to engage um, that will help your your knowledge in answering the questions moving forward. Once you've done all that, then firms then move to the action tracker. Now the action tracker is really a gap analysis process. So again, we're automating the gap analysis process, but it's also an audit report um, across um, all the question sets, across all the rules and regulations. Uh, and all these question sets are RAG rated, red, amber, green, high risk, significant rule breach, medium risk rule breach is the amber and low risk of practice are the green areas. As you can see, lots of areas for the firms in this particular firm to, to test case to take a look at across all the rules and regs, but we're not interested in all the rules and regs. What we're interested in 
Today is the consumer duty. So go into the your engagement key. Let's nail it down to the business function, which is consumer duty. And then we can take a look at, we've actually got these areas only to start to take a look at. So here is where you can start to take actions um, across the team uh, and take a look at what you need to do next. So move into the consumer duty area, the key area that you're looking at. Um, you can add it to your diary uh, if you wanted to. Um, because this is a test case, this is overdue now, which will go into red, but it will give you um, three months actually to do the reds. It will give you six months to do the ambers and, and nine months to do the green areas. Um, but the key issue with this is that um, you most importantly, you're evidencing accountability um, and, and uh, looking at all the key areas regarding responsibilities. So you can add in notes into that and it's all date stamped like so, um, which is good SMCR practice. Um, you can allocate a status to it. Is it delayed, severely delayed and so forth? And also the most senior person ideally should be placed in here um, who, who's, who's uh, responsible for this particular area. Um, it will also give you the pop-up resources. And for some of the um, areas, it will also give you checkpoints here that you need to take a look at uh, to reconfirm your knowledge and understanding that um, then you can answer the question to the right, right level. You can't complete it actually until you've answered it to the right level. Um, in this and then once you've done that you move back and then you move on to the next uh, particular area just to give you an idea of how we integrate with third parties so IntelliFlow we integrate with and this gives you an idea of what we're currently doing with IntelliFlow which is giving data quality health checks where you can look at for example all the missing data across your clients um, and clean that up download it as a CSV file uh, what we're also building for the consumer duty on this which will be available very shortly is um, effectively looking at the four outcomes um, across the consumer duty, the products and services, the price and value, consumer understanding and support. Um, and then we're going in through um, to IntelliFlow and looking at all the relevant data points there uh, and look at what is there and what is missing. So for example, if you have service cases and you have vulnerable customers in those service cases, what are you actually doing? Uh, what are the charges? What are the costs? What are the products? What are the holdings? And so forth. So lots of information coming and, and, and future upgrades coming on this, which is, is going to be important for you to access and know um, where the data is and the management information is. But most importantly, what Model Office is designed to do, as I said, is looking at streamlining, automating a lot of the diagnostic and the um, gap analysis information so that you know that you're complying with all the key rules and regulations, but in this case, the consumer GC. So hopefully this has given you a good view, overview of our current uh, system and how it's helping you support you in your consumer duty compliance journey. Thank you.